फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू अनदर वीडियो ऑफ जीटा एक्सिस एंड टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट परमानेंट और प्लानिटरी विंड सिस्टम्स दीस विंड सिस्टम्स आर कांस्टेंट थ्रू आउट द ईयर दे डू नॉट चेंज देयर कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स इवन विद द चेंज इन सीजंस और मूवमेंट ऑफ सन ओवर द अर्थ टुडे वी विल सी हाउ दीस विंड सिस्टम्स आर फॉर्मड एंड वेयर दे आर लोकेटेड नाउ इन दिस इमेज वी कैन सी इक्वेटोरियल रीजन ऑफ आवर अर्थ व्हिच इज मार्क्ड बाय दिस येलो कलर दिस रीजन रिसीव्स maximum amount of heat throughout the year and therefore it gets heated the air in this region rises up now because of the force created by this rising air the troposphere is also stretched a little bit over here and therefore we see that the troposphere is little higher in the equatorial region compared to polar regions centrifugal force also helps in this process we know that centrifugal force acts in direction perpendicular to the rotation axis and it depends on the distance from this rotation axis at the equator the distance is maximum therefore the coriolis force is maximum over here and in the polar regions the distance from the axis is less therefore the centrifugal force is less now because of this equatorial heating and centrifugal force we see that the air at the equator rises up now because this air rises up a low pressure region is created on the surface because of the depletion of air now in order to fill this depletion air from both sides starts to move towards this low pressure region which is created at the equator now these winds when they start moving towards the low pressure region we will see that on their way they will get heated because they are entering the equatorial region which has lot of heat so we can see here that both these wind currents are getting heated because of the sun these wind currents also face a deflection because of coriolis force we see in the northern hemisphere the coriolis force deflects them in the right hand direction while in the southern hemisphere the coriolis force deflects them in the leftward direction now when these wind currents reach the low pressure belt they cannot move forward but they start rising up because of both equatorial heating as well as centrifugal force in the process of rising up they will lose some of their heat when they reach the top of troposphere you will see that they get divided into two parts one part will move towards the southern direction in southern hemisphere the other part will move in the northern direction towards the northern hemisphere now as they move they lose a lot of heat because the atmosphere on in those heights is very cool therefore they lose a lot of heat and they become cold now as they become cold their weight increases and by the time they reaches this 30 to 40 degree latitude they will be very heavy they will not be able to move further north moreover the coriolis force also plays an important role the coriolis force will become so strong over here that it will not allow this wind to cross this latitude and therefore the wind systems will start to descend at 30 to 40 degree latitude and you can see over here that they are descending and they will again join this wind circulation system therefore a continuous wind circulation system is created near our equator you can see that throughout our earth such kind of wind circulation exists this wind circulation is called hadley cell it rises at equator it goes till 30 to 40 degree latitudes in both hemisphere and then it descends and the cycle continues this region in the middle this is called intertropical convergence zone it means that the winds from both the hemispheres they come and converge over here now because this winds are moving vertically up in this region that is from 5 degree north to 5 degree south you will see that there is not much wind at the surface the winds flow very slowly over here and that is why this region is called doldrums the shipping industry or the ships find it very difficult to navigate in those regions because of lack of winds now because the air rises at the equator we will see in upper atmosphere that we have a lot of cloud formation in this region and it gives a lot of rain while when we see this region where the air is descending we do not see formation of much clouds over here because the descending air does not form any rain due to adiabatic heating and so we can see that this hadley cell also affects weather in one way 
on a circular earth we can see that the headley cell will look something like this we can see the headley circulation going on throughout our earth it rises up at the equator descends at 30 to 40 degree latitude and then comes bang so this kind of circulation goes on near the equator throughout our earth now next we will see polar cell we have already seen centrifugal force in which we know that it is maximum at the equator because the distance is maximum at the equator from the rotation axis and it is less near the poles because the distance from the axis is small but we see that the force is applied in a direction perpendicular to rotation axis therefore in the polar region because of centrifugal force the air which is present over here experiences a force away from the rotation axis or away from the poles it is because of this the air which is descending over here it will move away from the poles now as these wind systems move away from the pole the pressure will decrease because the area over here is very small but when this amount of air they move to a larger region the area present to the same amount of air is very high now we know that if we increase the area the pressure will decrease therefore we see formation of a low pressure region over here this air rises up in the low pressure region we can see that this phenomena occurs all across the polar region in this image here we can see that the air is subsiding at the polar region because it is very cold over here and because of the cold the air it starts to become heavier and denser and it starts to descend over here now because of the centrifugal forces it will start to move away now when this air is moving away we can see here that the area present to this much amount of air is just this much but when it comes to this region we will see that a lot of area is available to the same amount of air and this decreases the pressure at the low pressure belt again this air will rise up and then flow back towards the poles so this cycle is also continuously repeated and we can see that such kind of cells exist in both hemispheres now the next cell is feral cell and to understand how feral cell is created let's have a quick look at headley cell and polar cell here we can see headley cell the air rises at the equator it rises because a low pressure belt is created over here due to thermal heating of our earth by the sun now if the earth stops rotating even then a low pressure belt will exist over here this air which rises up it reaches 30 to 40 degree latitude and becomes heavier and due to coriolis force it starts to descend now if the earth stops rotating there will be no coriolis force and therefore this air will not descend over here thus not creating the high pressure belt over here therefore this high pressure belt is created due to rotation of our earth next we will see the polar cell we can see here that this polar cell moves from this high pressure region towards this low pressure region this high pressure region is again created because of the cold atmosphere at the poles even if the earth stops rotating this high pressure region will still exist but here this low pressure belt is created because of coriolis force the coriolis force does not allow this air to move further ahead and therefore they rise over here this belt is also dynamically created because of rotation of our earth if there were no rotation of earth this belt will not exist now we know that air moves from high pressure region to low pressure region we have already seen there exists a high pressure region over here and a low pressure region over here therefore the air will naturally move from this high pressure belt towards this low pressure belt therefore a part of air which is descending will move towards this low pressure region again the coriolis force will become significant and it will not be able to move ahead and it will be dragged along with this polar cell so this air moves upwards when this air reaches the upper atmosphere it will move towards the equatorial region because a depletion of air is created over here and to fill this this air will again move towards the equatorial region it will reach towards the 30 to 40 degree latitude and again it will start descending the coriolis force will again not allow these wind systems to move ahead of this 30 to 40 degree latitude and therefore they will start descending over here and thus completing the whole cycle and this is called feral cell now here you can see a feral cell where this feral cell is moving in between this equatorial and polar cell 
We also see that at the boundaries of this cell, we have jet streams. This is tropical jet stream, which is at the intersection of feral cell and equatorial cell. And this is the polar jet stream, which is at the margin of the polar cell and feral cell. Now here we can see that there exists Hadley cell, feral cell and polar cell in both the hemispheres. We can see that these two are Hadley cells. Here we have feral cells and here we have polar cells. We can see that the pressure belts are also similarly distributed. We have a high pressure belt over here and we have a high pressure belt over here. We have a low pressure belt indicated in orange over here and we can see a low pressure belt over here. There is a jet stream. This is called polar jet stream and here we see a tropical jet stream. This is the side view of these cells and we can see all these three cells moving in harmony with each other. We can see that the Hadley cell descends over here, the feral cell also descends over here, it moves here and then it rises up with the polar cell, it goes up and this circulation for all these three cells continues. When we see all these three cells on a spherical earth, we will get a clear understanding. We can see how these cells are distributed. We see a low pressure belt over here, we see a high pressure belt and again a low pressure belt is present over here which you can see over here. The Hadley cell moves from the equatorial low pressure belt towards this tropical high pressure belt. Then from this high pressure belt to this polar low pressure belt we have feral cell which we can see here and then finally we have polar cell. At the margin of these two cells we have polar jet stream and at the margin of feral cell and Hadley cell we have the tropical jet stream. In the next videos, we will see some of the characteristics of these trade winds, how they behave in real atmosphere. And we will also see how they affect the climate of our earth. I hope you liked our video and if you have liked our video, then please subscribe and share it with your friends and please follow us on Twitter and Instagram.